Shalom, welcome to the Shofar Call Bible Study, where we believe that Acts 17.11, that each of us is called to be like the Bereans, to search the scriptures daily and to check whether what we find, if it is true or not. Now, we are in a season of a very high watch and the Lord's return is so close. Many, many brothers and sisters in the faith all around the world, watchmen, watchwomen, we're all awake and we are noticing the signs of the times. And we've all been studying at some level or the other, specifically with focus on Pentecost this year, 2020. And there were multiple dates being floated and some of them went, uh, went by and we are still here. And there are a couple of days coming forward. 6th of June and the 7th of June and we're, we're wondering, could it be so? So this video is primarily to look at the evidence that we have from the Bible, from other sources that are reliable, that we can verify and also to continue being faithful and to be a lover of the truth. And so this video that my husband and I have prepared is titled Pentecost Calendar and the emphasis would be on uh, checking out whether there is merit in looking at the calendar used by the Essenes, the calendar of Enoch or the Dead Sea Scrolls or the Zedok Priestly calendar compared to the regular Jewish calendars that is the follow those followed by the Pharisees or the Sadducees. So let's begin Pentecost 2020, on multiple calendars based on different computations of the 50-day counting, the Omer, we had different dates. For example, the Pharisees, they were looking at 29th of May as Pentecost and their pattern was to count from the 16th of Nisan or the 16th of the first month. Sadducees, 31st of May 2020. And the Pentecost counting was from first fruits, which was within the Feast of Unleavened Bread. In fact, we at the Shofar Call, uh, we believe that this method of computation was very accurate in terms of Yeshua fulfilling the three days, three nights in the tomb, the prophecy of that, and then being resurrected on the third day. So 31st May 2020 was a very high watch for us. At the same time, it went by. And so we are back to our drawing boards and we're looking at what else is out there. The Kerites also this year looked at 31st May 2020 as Pentecost. They have a very similar format as the Sadducees, but they also observe the actual barley ripening. And then we have the Essenes and they have 7th June 2020, which is the 15th of Sivan the 15th day of the third month. It's a fixed date on this particular calendar. Now the calendar of the Essenes is based on Enoch's calendar found in the first book of Enoch, in the book of Jubilees. It's also called the Dead Sea Scroll calendar because this calendar, the fragments of these were found in the Dead Sea uh, Scrolls starting in 1947. Can you imagine Israel becomes a nation again? The fig tree comes back into the land in 1948. And starting in 1947, all these Dead Sea Scrolls started cropping up. Could it be a coincidence? So many fragments, so many copies of the Book of Jubilees, of the Book of First Enoch, the letters of the patriarchs. Now, we're not saying that it is uh, scripture, it is the canon and all of that. But I'm saying it's interesting that there is another calendar possible that emerges in the year that the fig tree comes back, that the nation of Israel comes back. So it is important, I think, for every student of the Bible, every disciple of Yeshua the Messiah, to be aware of and to even look at accessing these 
scrolls or these excerpts or at least to to glean from those who have studied this now in a particular fragment called mmt it's miksat ma ase hatora it's a sectarian calendar is found 4q3941-2 basically in one of the caves numbers 4 in the qumran region near the dead sea in that particular excerpt that we find the fragment mmta a sectarian calendar there is a listing of the third month and the different days and it says on the 7th of the third month sabbath on the 14th of it that is the third month sabbath on the 15th of it feast of weeks so we see there that from the dead sea scrolls there is some evidence that supports the feast of weeks or the pentecost as we call it to be on the 15th day of the third month okay just keep that in mind 15th day of the third month now looking at the seven appointed times of the lord just a quick recap we call them moedim in hebrew it's found in the book of leviticus chapter 23 and we know that passover is for one day on the 14th day of the first month feast of unleavened bread is for 7 days from the 15th to the 21st of the first month where the first and the seventh days are both sabbaths then we have first fruits of barley which is one day and it is to be offered after the weekly sabbath and this definition varies the weekly sabbath or the sabbath where exactly which sabbath that definition varies and then we have the feast of weeks or the feast of harvest or even the feast of the first fruits it's for one day it's 50 days from the first fruits of barley now here again the computation varies but in all computations this feast of first fruits the feast of weeks the feast of harvest what we know as pentecost occurs in the third month now from the essene calendar we know that it is on the 15th of the third month and then the fifth appointed time is the day of shouting or trumpets or yom teruah which is for one day it's on the first day of the seventh month then we have the day of atonement or yom kippur it's for one day on the 10th day of the seventh month and then we have the feast of tabernacles which is 7 days plus 1 day it's from the 15th to the 21st of the 7th month which is 7 days plus 1 extra day the 22nd of the 7th month as shemini atzeret day 8 where the 1st and the 8th days are both high sabbaths so we actually have seven appointed times listed in our bible leviticus 23 and this includes three feasts not all are called feasts or the chagim so the feasts of the lord chagim are the feast of unleavened bread the feast of weeks which we call as pentecost the feast of tabernacles and these are found for example in deuteronomy 16:16 16. three times in a year shall all thy meals appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before the lord empty now all three feasts we'll find in the bible have a support of being harvest times so these three particular feasts are unique they are different from the other four appointed times Now according to the Essenes who follow the Enoch calendar all three feasts are on the 15th day the feast of unleavened bread is on the 15th day of the first month the feast of weeks is on the 15th day of the third month and the feast of tabernacles is the 15th day of the seventh month so we saw that the pentecost this year is 7th june 2020 which happens to be the 15th of sivan based on the essene calendar on their computation this is a full moon time just like unleavened bread and tabernacles full moon is is linked with 
with harvest. It's linked with kese, the appointed time. So harvest is at full moon. So the pattern of unleavened bread is barley, Pentecost, wheat, and tabernacles, fruit. So it's beautiful that the three feasts, all three have a harvest pattern. And if the Enoch calendar is correct, if the Essenes calendar is correct, it would be amazing that even Pentecost is actually on the 15th of the third month, which makes it a full moon event, which is beautiful for a harvest. Now, who are these Essenes? Another name for this group is the Yachad, which means united or even oneness. Now, this was a name they gave themselves, the Essenes, and they had a very strong in-group bond, very strong communal ties within the Essene community. They lived all over Israel. At the same time, they are uniquely associated with a region called Qumran, which is near the Dead Sea. And as you can see in this image, they were all men. They used to be dressed in white. They were strict observers of the Torah. They were followers of uh, the true God. They believed in the coming Messiah. They followed the calendar according to Enoch. And they were extremely studious. They were students of the scripture. You can see in this picture, they are constantly either reading or writing or studying. And they have these jars in which they would keep the scrolls. So the Essenes are a very unique group and I encourage you to go and study about them and to see who they are and what they stood for. Interestingly, the Essenes also believed in baptism. In fact, Josephus says that the Essenes, they bathed daily. They took baptism every day. And the early church met near a river for this reason. And Paul said, do not touch anything unclean. And if you start looking at all the teachings that we find in the Bible, we find that many of those are very similar to what the Essenes believed and followed. Now, one person who's possibly an Essene is John the Baptist. Possible, may not be. But it's interesting because John 1 verse 23 says that John the Baptist said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Think of wilderness, the desert place, the one who stays in the word of God. These are the people that are making straight the way of the Lord. They do not budge from God's path. It's a narrow path. They stay on it. And they want to honor God. It's not about being legalistic and religious, but they genuinely, sincerely want to give up the things of the world and to pursue the God of the Torah, the living God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So these Essenes had a special calendar that they followed. It was the Enoch calendar, which is found in the first book of Enoch and even the book of Jubilees. These are extra-biblical books. But what is interesting is that those who are studying this calendar, be it Christians or even non-Christian Jews, for instance, they all are saying that if this is truly God's calendar, it is a perfect calendar. If this calendar is really of the living God, who made the sun, moon and stars to be signs for us, why would he not have a calendar that is so foolproof, that is so perfect that no matter whether you can see the sun or the moon or the stars or not, that the calendar is so watertight that it just happens to fit in perfectly with all the right seasons, with all the right feasts of the Lord, with the appointed times and so on and so forth. So the Essene calendar has seven special Sabbaths. Again, based on Leviticus 23. So if you look at this, for instance, in the first month, notice that 15 and 21 are highlighted because it is the Feast of Unleavened Bread there. Now, we know the Passover is not a Sabbath. So that's why it's not listed. Even first fruits is not a Sabbath. That's why it's not being marked in the first month. 
Now look at month number 3. 15 is highlighted. So the 15th day of the third month is Pentecost, again a special Sabbath. Then look at the 7th month. You have the first day of the 7th month, Yom Teruah. Then you have the 10th day of the 7th month, Yom Kippur. And then you have the 15th to 22nd is the season of the Feast of Tabernacles. One thing I want us to notice in this, that this particular calendar, the days would always fall back on the same day, year on year on year. The 15th of the first month will always be on a Wednesday. The 14th of the first month on the Essene calendar will always be on a Tuesday. The 15th of the third month on the Essene calendar will always be on a Sunday, which is the first day of the week after the weekly Sabbath. So you start seeing this pattern in this calendar. Now let's do one thing. Let's take just the first month and track some things. So let's look at the Essenes calendar and the first month of it. The weekly Sabbaths, that is the Saturday, are on the 4th, the 11th, the 18th and the 25th of the first month. Those are the weekly Sabbaths. The 14th of the first month, Passover, is on a Tuesday on the Essene calendar. This is important. Keep, keep a note of this. The 15th, that is day one of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is also a high Sabbath, is on the Essene calendar, on Enoch's calendar. It's always a Wednesday. 16th, day two, Thursday. 17th is Friday. And then 18th, day four of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the weekly Sabbath, is the Saturday. And 19th, day five of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, is Sunday, and so on. So on the 21st, which is the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is also a high Sabbath. Now you notice in this, first fruits is not there. When we usually studied about Pentecost and you know the Pentecost computation starts from first fruits and the first fruits is is you start counting after the Sabbath. So which Sabbath? And we said we believe it's a weekly Sabbath because Yeshua fulfilled three days, three nights. Right? So we believe it's within this feast of unleavened bread. But in the Essenes calendar, it's different. What they do is they take this feast of unleavened bread and then they say, let's go to the Sabbath. After this feast, so which is on the weekly Sabbath, after the 21st is 25th of the first month. So the 25th is the weekly Sabbath after the entire Passover and unleavened bread, all seven days. So 25th of the first month is a Saturday. Which means that first fruits on the Essenes calendar, on Enoch's calendar, is on the 26th of the first month the first fruits of barley. Yes, this is after the weekly Sabbath, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, so this is a different computation, different understanding of what is it means to be after the Sabbath, after the weekly Sabbath. Okay, just keep this in mind. On the Enoch's calendar, on the Zadok Priestly calendar, or the Dead Sea Scroll calendar, or the Essenes calendar, 26th of the first month is the first fruits of barley. Okay. <laughs> what about Yeshua's three days, three nights, first fruits fulfillment then? This calendar is totally off then. It doesn't hold. That's right. Hang in there. We will look at that. Okay. It is important. We have to test this like the Bereans. Now, the Essenes calendar. Sticking on with it, first fruits to Pentecost. How is that timeline? So, 26th of the first month is first fruits of barley, which is Omer 1. Right? The count begins here 27th Omer 2, 28th Omer 3, 29th Omer 4, 30th Omer 5. In the Essenes calendar, they have 
30 days for each month except in the third month then the sixth month ninth and twelfth they have an additional day as intercalary days to adjust for a 364 day calendar year so after the 30th from the first to 30th of the second month we have omer 6 to omer 35 and then from the first to the 14th of the third month we reach omer 49 so we've finished seven Sabbaths. So the 15th of the third month is the first fruits of the wheat harvest, Omer 50. So on the Essenes calendar, first fruits is always on the 26th of the first month and Pentecost is always on the 15th of the third month. This is very important. Make a note. Don't miss this. Now, some evidence for this we find in another fragment from the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's called Mishmarot D, 4Q325. In Hebrew, Mishmarot means priestly divisions. First Chronicles 24 details the 24 priestly divisions that served in the temple in Jerusalem. Now, this is a rabbit trail. We're not going to go there, but just something to consider. I mean, could this be the 24 elders of Revelation? Is there some clue here? Anyway, that's, that's a different study altogether. Now, these divisions, the priestly divisions, were originally formed during the reign of King David. So let's look at First Chronicles 24 and see what it says there. Verse 7. Now, the first lot came forth to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah. Okay, so these are two priests who led certain priestly divisions. The first Priestly division was led by Jehoiarib and the second Jediah. Interestingly, this fragment, Mishmarot D, it actually states Passover on the third day of the week. On the 18th day in the first month is the Sabbath of the week of Jehoiarib in the evening. So it's identifying here that on the Sabbath, the first month, the first cycle is coming to this guy, Jehoiarib. And then it says, on the 25th day in the first month is the Sabbath of the week of Jediah. Again, the next, very next name there is same as First Chronicles 24-7, Jediah. And it actually says, during the same week, 25th day is the Sabbath. During the same week is the Feast of Barley on the 26th day in the first month after the Sabbath. Okay, you see this Dead Sea Scroll find that actually doesn't contradict First Chronicles 24-7 and also supports the Enoch calendar placement of barley first fruits on the 26th of the first month. Now moving on, there's a big question for us to consider. All this is great. Okay, some extra dates coming in. But what about Yeshua fulfilling as our first fruits? What about those three days, three nights? It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And we read in verse 23, each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits. Right? It's, it's so many times that Paul has confirmed Christ the first fruits. What about three days, three nights then? It just blows the entire pattern. Now you see, on the 14th day of the first month, which we call as Nisan or Abib, is Passover. Yeshua was crucified. So, night number one, the 14th of the first month, night number one is a Wednesday night. Now this is not Enoch's calendar. This is the regular Jewish calendar. So when Jesus died, on that cross as our sacrifice lamb. It was the 14th of the first month. Bible says it was Passover. He was crucified. It was a Wednesday night, night number one. He was buried. 15th is day one of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So Yeshua is buried in the tomb. So you have day one and night two, Thursday. 
Then we have 16th is day 2 of unleavened bread. Yeshua is still in the tomb. And day 2 is Friday. Night number 3 is Friday. The weekly Sabbath begins. And then the 17th is day 3 of unleavened bread. Yeshua resurrected at the very end. So day 3, Saturday, the weekly Sabbath ends. So when you start from Wednesday night, the burial of Yeshua, that he died on a Wednesday, he was buried there. He was three days, three nights in the tomb. And then he resurrected at the end of the 17th, which is day three of unleavened bread that time. And it happens to be at the end of the Sabbath. So three days, three nights, and on the third day, fulfilled. But 18th of the first month, which is after the weekly Sabbath, the Sunday, the first fruits. We believed fulfilled by Yeshua. But is there more? Is there something that we are missing? The Bible doesn't directly say that Yeshua fulfilled on the 18th or on the day after the weekly Sabbath. He fulfilled it on that particular Sunday. It doesn't say that. We have assumed it and it actually beautifully fits the pattern of being first fruits in the Sadducees calendar and, and, and the three days, three nights format. So let's examine this further. There's a, another very big question. How could Yeshua eat a Passover meal before the actual Passover? Why did he celebrate the Passover meal a night before the killing of the lamb? And we read these in the Gospel accounts. Matthew 26, verses 17 to 20. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, Where will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Hello, the Passover lamb is still alive. How come he is going to celebrate the Passover one night before? And Jesus said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. Luke 22 verse 8 And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And then verses 14 to 15 and when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Here's the Passover lamb. How did he have a Passover meal before the Passover lamb could die? John 13 verses 1 to 2. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So in all these gospel accounts, we find Yeshua did eat the Passover meal before the actual Passover. What's happening here? The one who fulfills the calendar, the one who is so specific on feast days and appointed times, why was he eating the Passover meal a day earlier? Was he following a different calendar? Was Passover a day earlier on a different calendar? Were there multiple calendars during Yeshua's time? For example, consider this in the book of John, chapter 2, verse 13. It says, that, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. What was the need to say and the Jews' Passover was at hand? Why not just say and the Passover was at hand? That means there's a distinction being made here. Again, notice in John 11 verses 55 to 56, And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they, these all these other people that are at Jerusalem for the Passover, they were looking for Jesus and they spake among themselves as they stood in the temple and they were saying, What think ye that he will not come to the feast? Just before that, Yeshua 
had kind of gone into hiding. He didn't really come out and minister to people in public. So they were like, do you think he's going to come and observe this feast with us? Either because he was hiding or maybe because he had a different calendar that he was following. I'm not sure what's happening here. So which calendar was Yeshua following? And how could he have the Passover meal, which is supposed to be eaten after the Passover lamb is killed? It's supposed to be eaten on 15th of the month, of the first month. How could he eat it on the 14th? One night earlier, what's happening here? Is there a calendar where the Passover meal is had a day earlier? Yes. In the Essene calendar, which is based on Enoch's calendar, which is the Dead Sea Scroll calendar, the Zadok priestly calendar, different names for the same calendar, basically the 14th of the first month, which is Passover, is on a Tuesday. Whereas we said that the year that Yeshua died, 14th of Nisan was a Wednesday. So it was one day ahead. And scholars have found that the Essenes, they observe the Passover Seder meal always on a Tuesday night. Always. So by following the Essene calendar and having a Passover meal one night earlier, Yeshua was approving the Essene calendar. So in the Essene's calendar, Passover, the 14th of the first month, was always on a Tuesday. But that year, during Yeshua's sacrifice, in the Jewish calendar, Passover, 14th of the first month, was a Wednesday for him to fulfill three days, three nights. Remember the 18th Nisan, first fruits on the Sadducees Jewish calendar. Amazing. Amazing. Something's happening here. In fact, there are uh, resources, there are books that even say that Essenes had a special quarter in uh, Jerusalem near the Temple Mount area and this upper room where they had the Passover meal was most likely to be a house of an Essene. So very interesting here. So Yeshua kept the Essene calendar also. He not only ate the Passover on the 14th of Nisan on the Essene calendar, he also became the Passover lamb on the 14th of Nisan on the Jewish calendar. How amazing is that? He ticked both the calendars at the same time in one shot. What an amazing God. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. Now, if we, if we look at it that he fulfilled this Essene calendar here, did he also fulfill first fruits on the Essene calendar? That is the 26th of the first month. Is first fruits of barley, right? On the Essene calendar. Did he even fulfill that? So let's look at the Gospel of John and what happened in terms of the resurrection and the timelines involved there. John chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh, Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. John 20, verse 17. Jesus saith unto her, Mary Magdalene, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. So it's amazing, on the first day of the week, Remember, it's after the t after 17th of Nisan, 18th of Nisan, Mary Magdalene's come there and when she realizes that Yeshua actually rose from the dead, he resurrected, but he says, don't touch me, I'm yet to ascend. And then we read in John 20 verse 19, then the same day at evening. Now when you think of same day at evening, you're saying, okay, later in that same day, when Mary Magdalene saw, it is still the first day of the week, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. He said, Shalom. In this particular instance here, 
Thomas was not with them. Thomas Didymus was not with them. And then we read in verse 26 of this chapter, And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Shalom. And at this time, Yeshua actually tells Thomas, Touch me. Examine. Thomas is asked to examine Yeshua's wounds. Very interesting. Let's put some dates to this. Now, Based on what we know of the timeline when Yeshua died, in the year that he died and he rose again, it was the 18th of the first month. That is where this John 20 verse 1, then John 20 verse 17, and also John 20 verse 19 took place. And how beautiful, verse 26, after eight days, after eight days, after eight days brings us to the 26th of the first month, which is first fruits barley on the Essenes or Enoch's calendar. Wow! And if you read the Gospel of John, you will find, even in the next chapter, that it says that Yeshua ap appeared to his disciples three times. First time on 18th, the second time on the 26th. How amazing! And the third time, after that, when they were in Tiberias. How amazing, how amazing. Because you see, the first fruits offering of barley was fulfilled again, not only on the regular Jewish calendar, 18th of the first month, but also on the Essene Enoch calendar, the 26th of the first month. In fact, the 26th of the first month is probably a very amazing fulfillment because he asked Thomas to examine the offering, to examine before it is eventually lifted up. That's amazing. So exciting. How come a calendar that shows up in the very year that Israel comes back as a nation? And only now we are really beginning to get some translations of it. We are beginning to even understand it's a very complex system. This Enoch's calendar is simple yet very complex complex. It's complicated sometimes to just get your brain around it. But our Father, our God, is so brilliant. He's ticking multiple calendars at the same time. Amazing. So Yeshua followed the Essene calendar. <laughs> he had a Passover meal on the 14th of the first month on the Essene calendar. So he celebrated, he basically kept the Passover he didn't die on the Essene calendar date. He died on the Jewish calendar of the 14th of the first month, but he still observed the Passover meal on the Essene calendar. He thus celebrated Passover, made his new covenant with his disciples on the Essene calendar, and he also became the Passover lamb for the entire world the very next day on the Jewish calendar. This is very exciting for me to consider. Back to back. He met his disciples as the first fruits on both the 18th and the 26th of the first month. The 18th of the first month, first fruits for the Jewish calendar, the Sadducee calendar. That is why Paul was able to say, Christ the first fruits, Christ the first fruits. And on the Essene calendar, the 26th of the first month, we see that in the Gospel of John. Amazing. So Yeshua did not denounce the Essenes or their calendar. In fact, he kept the Essenes calendar. So Pentecost 2020 is on 7th June 2020 on the Essene calendar. This is the 15th day of the third month. However, interestingly, coincidentally, this year on the Jewish calendar, on the regular Jewish calendar, if you were to look at their calendar, 7th June 2020 is listed as the 15th day of the third month, 15th of Sivan. How amazing is that? This doesn't happen every year. In fact, next year, it doesn't hold that. It's not on a Sunday. The 15th of Sivan on, a, on the Jewish calendar is not. How amazing that this year, the Enoch calendar, the Essene calendar, the Jewish calendar, all begin to coincide and to align 
Could we fly home this year, 7th June? I sure wish we would. I don't know. But we are like the Bereans. We watch, we study. And we watch and pray that we are counted worthy to escape what is coming, the time of Jacob's trouble, to stand before the Son of Man, to be with him forever. If we'll be waiting beyond 7th June, <laughs> let's assume that it's not this year on any of these calendars, if we're still here. Numbers 18 verse 12 says, All the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given thee. Now this Numbers 18 clarifies that there's first fruits not just of wheat, but it's also of wine and oil. Very interesting because again in the Temple scroll, which is one of the findings in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there is something called the first fruits of the new wine, which is 50 days from Pentecost. Once you reach Pentecost, then you count seven Sabbaths, and then the day after that Sabbath is the first fruits of the new wine being offered. Okay, so this is extra biblical, but we have a verse in our Bible that talks about first fruits of wine. In fact, very interestingly, there are also some believers in Christ that mention that uh, the true Pentecost is another 50 days from what we think as Pentecost. Right? So it's almost 100 days away from first fruits of barley. Why do they get that? Because they get that from Acts 2 verse 13, when on the day of Pentecost, when it will fully come and the Holy Spirit came on all these disciples in the upper room. The others were mocking and they said, these men are full of new wine. Very interesting. And it was on that day that 3,000 got saved. right? Whereas at the time of Mount Sinai, when Moses brought down the tablets, which was again considered to be another 40 to 50 days from the previous time when he brought the oral law, 3,000 died. So there is some connection here. Something's going on. So maybe we'll study on this later if we are still here on this earth. The first fruits of the new wine. That might be an interesting time to be taken up. Praise God. The Lord said he will not drink of the fruit of the wine till he has that with us in the kingdom. Interestingly, if we are there past even that date, we will watch for first fruits of the new oil, which is 50 days from the new wine according to the temple scroll. And I also wonder if this is linked with Matthew 25, the parable of the virgins, the ten virgins, having this extra oil bit. Could it be linked with this part of the last 50 days of the first fruit season? So we have first fruits of barley, we have first fruits of wheat, new wine, new oil. And then actually I've not listed in this particular screen, there's even a six-day wood offering, which is listed again in the temple scroll. So it's quite interesting. And if we look at the book of Revelation chapter 6, it talks about that when the seals are opening, right? it says, do not harm the oil and the wine. Okay, so there's something going on there. Hopefully, we don't have to study too much into that, uh, that we are gone soon. But if we're still here, we will study and we will stay diligent and be lovers of the truth. If you're still there past all of that, the last three fall moedim will follow. No matter what, our redemption draws nigh. We are in such times, we at the shofar call are, are just overwhelmed with the number of signs and the events happening and the chaos in the world and the wars and rumors of wars and the pestilences and the famines and the plagues and the violence and the evil and the lawlessness that's already beginning to manifest, it's amazing. It's amazing. We are really close. And sometimes we get very tired of waiting and watching and praying. And we just want to be out of this world and be free from this body of death and be in that resurrected state. We are groaning. We are groaning. But no matter what, our God, His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. 
And looking at the calendars and the way he has put, if the Enoch calendar is truly of our God, it's amazing how sophisticated and perfect, close to perfect it is in ensuring that nobody misses the appointed times. Whether we can see the sun or the moon or the stars, whether you can observe them or not, as long as you have the calendar that the Essenes followed, the Yachat, those who wanted to be united and one, the ones who emphasized on love and coming away from worldliness. If that calendar holds true, our God is so perfect in how he has put everything together. He will work everything out in his perfect time. So till he calls us home, one day at a time, we will faithfully abide in our Messiah Yeshua and we will be determined to be excited, to watch and pray and to not give up being lovers of the truth. Shalom. God bless you. And may he find us faithful. May he find us faithful. Amen.